Welcome to this Automation World video podcast sponsored by Schneider Electric. In this podcast, we'll look at the automation trends taking place in the mining industry with an eye toward how that industry's use of these technologies is being shaped by economic forces and what that may mean for other industries' use of these technologies as well. I'm David Greenfield, Director of Content at Automation World, and joining me for this discussion is Tim Soule, Chief Architect for Industry Software Solutions at Schneider Electric. So Tim, the mining industry has been at the forefront of automation news with a large number of advanced technology applications for the past several years now. And based on your experience working directly with this industry, why is that the case? If you look at it, um, over the last 10 years, 15 years, we've had a boom, a significant boom in what they call the mining boom, which has been driven by the Chinese economy and the Chinese expansion. Um, driving uh, the need for iron and coal and various other pieces. And the same with India with uh, power. So, but in the last probably two years, we've had a decline in the commodity price. So those CapEx projects are probably sort of less panicky. But at the moment, in that boom, you saw a significant change in the way customers were trying to change their supply chain. Instead of being individual mines, and a transport to the port, and then a port, they were now merging those into one collaborative um, supply chain, which has caused changes, a significant change in operational transformation, the introduction of integrated operational centers, and a whole way of working with people. Considering what you've learned from your interactions with the mining industry recently, what specific automation technologies and applications are end users in mining most interested in? And do you see these technologies driving industry in a specific direction, or is it the other way around? And by that I mean are shifts in the industry leading end users to focus on specific technologies? Well, probably the biggest transformation or biggest thing you see people talking about in, if you go to the conferences, you talk to them in the industry, the leaders are all, as a part of this, supply chain change and the move towards pit to port as an integrated environment. They're introducing the, what they call the integrated operational centers. These massive, not control rooms for one plant, but control rooms which are probably size of big buildings and they have multiple mine controls in there. So they're moving the, mi the mine control centers from the individual sites to a central area. And they're moving their railway, the port, the power into that one area, all under the one roof, alongside planning and scheduling. So now people talk to each other. They actually are not isolated. They can change their um, systems. But by doing that, it's introduced some challenges in operational practices because all of these mines were developed individually over the last 20 or 30 years with different experiences, user experiences, different automation processes and different operational practices. What companies are now doing is how do we go about uh, standardizing those operational practices so they get consistency from one mine to the next and bringing early awareness because now we're operating mines thousands of miles away from the physical mine. So how do we get awareness of issues early? So we're moving from the as-is state, which is where we have an alarm or an awareness today, to the 2B state. So how can we see it earlier with things like abnormal situational awareness or situational awareness uh, techniques with the move to consistent management and notification. So this is a, causing it around people. So you've cited some significant transformational activities taking place within mining that are centered around these software technologies. Now, given that, how are these users in the industry setting about modernizing their operations and their workforce with these transformational goals in mind? The first phase of any integrated operational center is you build a building and you move the control, which was at the remote site, you duplicate it into the operational center, and effectively, you've still got the backup on site. But with that comes the exact behavior, the exact control and experience which you had on that site. But now what we see is 
one site had one sort of control. It might be black. It might be red means on. And uh, another site, red means off. And so now, how do you move your operators between these environments, these operational controls? So what the second phase, which is sort of happening, starting to happen with the leading companies in the world around this at the moment, is they're moving into how do they standardize? And that's where abnormal situational awareness comes into play, being able to see things earlier. Second is have consistency in standards, standards in your automation control, how do you manage automation control across multiple sites and do it the same way. And the second one is how do you manage standards in your UI or your operational experience? Where things come up, how do I navigate? Where do I go to? It should be able to move from site to site. And by doing, and I should be able to take the best operators or the best operational people and start to do operational innovation by the sharing best practices, embedding knowledge within the system. So what we're starting to see is people move where they move the knowledge from the people into the system. And this is coming critical as we move into the transformation to the what we call the aging workforce is moving away. And we're now not gonna to go to a new workforce. We're gonna to go to a completely dynamic workforce where the workforce of the millennial They'll, they won't be in the role for years. So we cannot assume that the experience is in the person anymore about the site. The experience is, has to be in the system because the person may never have been to that site or been there very little. So now we're moving this not, uh, experience of people today into the system, giving them consistent operations through standards, and we need to build knowledge and operational process into that. So that's a huge transformation because the tenureship... By 2020, we expect the tenureship of people in a role to be less than 2.4 years. That's going from five to six years now, down to 2.4 years and even less. This is a huge change over. So it's an, the new workforce is a dynamic workforce, constantly rotating, not necessarily leaving the company, but moving uh, roles or locations. So how do you bring operational innovation in? and move that forward. So the big thing at the moment is how do you manage standards? How do you manage your best practices? Do it once, get it, and then deploy it to every mine, every port, every system, and now improve on it as you go further forward. But this, you've got to start at the base level. You have to get a, a level playing field and look and feel before you can move forward on that journey. And that's what people are now working out. How do we manage standards? How do we capture knowledge? And how do we evolve that, put it in a system which evolves that further forward, which is part of the massive operational transformation. Now, many of the issues you cited, you know, standardization, best practice propagation, capturing knowledge from workers and putting it into operation systems and continuous improvement, these are all increasingly common across industries. Now, with those broad-based issues in mind, tell us how the mining industry is addressing these specific challenges when it comes to adopting the technologies you've mentioned. The big challenges, when you look at it, all of these sites, most of these sites are not greenfield, e.g. they're not new mines. You do have some new mines, some new ports, where they're expanding or putting new mines in. But a lot of them are existing hardware control systems, PLCs, uh, which and supervisory systems and operational systems were put into place 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, and they'll put in by as a project for that site. They weren't put in as a bigger picture for the environment. And in some cases, they acquired them. So they'll put it, they were even part of a different company. So how do you go about now maintaining operational continuity, e.g. doing production, while we go and change that, those standards. How do we do the change management of humans? Because they're going to also have to operate the plants differently. They've got a remote or, or, uh, diff, uh, from a distance. We're also dealing with remote people. So now you've got remote sites. So the, we're now moving away from an operator to an operational team. So from isolation of one to a team, a team of planners, team of execution people, a quarterback sitting inside the operational center, and my site people and experts who might be on site 
and my experts might be remote. How do I make them work in a community and work in a collaborative way and allow that to move forward? That's where the challenge is. So bringing those people together and then being able to ma manage the standards across and evolve these standards into the existing systems. The other challenge they've also got is they don't have one vendor. There's not one vendor from, you know, as much as I'm sure we'd like it all to be Schneider, it's not. They might have bought from Schneider, they might have bought from vendor X, vendor Y, vendor Z. So therefore, how do we enable, does that mean they have to go to one, standards mean one vendor? That's not practical. As we go to the internet of things or the industrial internet of things, we have increasingly different vendors coming into the market with good equipment, with their own control and their own approach, but we need to bring consistency. So they need to move to a plat an environment which needs some sort of enterprise standards management, which actually doesn't just standardize management of PLC control and automation control, but also graphics, experience, reports, processes, all the way across so we can build up that library and that experience. And then, you know, once you see somebody do it better on one plant, capture that, make it a new standard and roll it out over other standards. So that's the challenge is there aren't in the industry, industrial market, there really isn't standards management systems. We have systems to manage distributed control and PLCs and some, some supervisories, but we really don't have, we haven't had up until now that, opera, that movement towards a standards management system. Now, it's interesting that you mentioned the multiple vendor reality when it comes to automation technologies used in the mining industry, which is typically the case across industries. So considering this reality, how does Schneider Electric position itself to function within this context and in light of the challenges faced by industry that you mentioned? So basically, to address those, the challenges, we started, we released a platform a number of years ago, I think 13 or 14 years ago, which was targeted at going across multiple vendors, multiple hardwares. And it has a concept of effectively object oriented uh, management. That works with inside and has been very successful uh, with inside plants. And the leading operational centers in this industry are all using that as their standards management for the supervisory level. The challenge they're running into is how do they take that same concept and now do it at the PLC level with existing different vendors, vendor A on one site, vendor B on a, uh, site, the next site, and manage those standards and procedures to go across even multiple supervisory plants. So as we move those up. So we've been working with a multiple of these customers to continuously build tools which look at the, a, the standards management configuration and how do you have multi-vendors, multi deal with multi-vendor and multiple versions and version management across the systems. And we've been developing those tools for the last couple of years, uh, three to four years. And we're now on the verge of releasing the next major wave, leading on from where we uh, released Orchestra uh, 10 years ago. So it's out of that next wave on how do you go about doing that and the standards. But also your UI experience has changed. When we built the likes of InTouch and SciTech 20 years or 25 years ago, it was one thing. Today, in an operational center, They've got a lot more data. We're no longer just an HMI. It is information coming from an SAP system, coming from an EAM system, which is your asset management system, information from your uh, plant. And so it may and might be documentation, delay systems, logbooks, etc. How do you bring all of that into one experience? Similar to what you do on the internet. I can bring lots of data from lots of sources. How can I make that sort of experience happen in the real-time world? So we're introducing the next level of operational management interface, which is the next level of collaboration, next level of content, combining that with our enterprise standards management platform and experience. 
So yeah, we've gone from an HMI experience to an operational experience where our team can collaborate or the operational team can collaborate. So I think that's the big change which we've been moving through in the last 10 years is how do we build systems for an operational team and for integrating networks of assets together, which with the assumption that people will not have one vendor. And that's a big assumption. The second assumption you've got to remember is, and there's two things we believe they have to master. One is they have to, mar or they have to accommodate multiple vendors. And the other one is they have to accommodate multiple people are different, humans are different. They've got different experience. One's five years experience, one's 20 years experience, one's you know, 10 years experience. They're all different experience. How do you, can you get, is everybody gonna be the same? I doubt it. So how do you abstract that experience piece by putting the system, the experience into the system? So that's where we've been evolving down that side and trying to manage that variation for customers because otherwise they will not have a chance of mastering that supply chain. Well, thank you, Tim. And thank you for joining us for this video podcast. For more information, please visit the website shown here.